In the whole entire world, there is one UN-recognized country without a national team. One UN-recognized country without a national team. And it's Vatican City, except it's not. They do have a national team. What about Tuvalu, smallest country in the world? They have a national team. Monaco, it's like half a mile long. But of course, they have a national team. They might not try to qualify for World Cups, but they do put their best players on the field, have a whole federation, and play matches against other countries. Usually, the Vatican and Monaco play each other, but they're still playing. And all those countries have a lot less people than the one that doesn't have a team, a federation, a league, or anything. And to find this mystery country, you need to know your geography. So thank goodness I have a lot of storage space in my brain. You could land a B-52 on this forehead. But on our tour of geography, we're headed to Los Angeles. Don't worry, we're leaving soon. And then we're headed to Hawaii. And then you keep going left. You see that spot with all the water there? Zoom in, because that's the country. It's called the Marshall Islands. Well, it may initially look like there's no land here at all, 60,000 people call this country home, and most of them live in the capital of Majuro, which is insane because that island is just 10 kilometers long, and it is only long. So not a lot of land, but a lot of people for the amount of land that's there, and they've never played a national team game or had a national federation until now because there are some hardy souls trying to change that. And you could actually get involved in how they set up their national team. They just had a Twitter competition where you could submit your ideas for what their jersey was supposed to look like. But we're getting to all of that in a second. Why did they not have a national team already? Well, there you can blame your favorite soccerers. United States, it was our, it was our, it, it's our fault. It usually is. The United States of America. This is actually rooted in history, which is awesome for me because I'm a history major, I love history, and I have a history podcast linked in the description that you definitely should check out. But it's a passion project, and I have no free time, and so there's only two episodes, but they're cool. We're getting distracted. Lock back in. Islands. Right, there was vicious fighting in the Marshall Islands in World War II. Japan owned it for a while, the United States took it from them, and then administered the islands for over 30 years. And as a result, the culture of the United States became kind of the dominant culture in the Marshall Islands too. They love baseball, they love basketball, they love American football. Over the course of those 30 years, the United States also used some of the atolls in the Marshall Islands for nuclear testing, so there is a chance their national team could be very good if they have some radioactive superstars around. But of course, the United States famously doesn't care about soccer and didn't have a continuous professional league until 1994, begging the question, where did I come from? Marshall Islands wrote their own constitution in 1979, declared independence, but then struck a deal with the United States so the U.S. could keep a military base in the Marshall Islands in exchange for providing military protection for the country, which meant that the U.S. culture continued to dominate in the Marshall Islands, basketball, baseball, American football, things that you may or may not understand at all. And by 2018, it was clear that even the explosion of soccer in the United States had not reached the Marshall Islands yet, because there was this wonderful article written. I mean, just look at the subtitle, The One Country That Doesn't Care About Soccer. That's awesome. The article is a great read, linked in the description, but it quotes various Marshallese people as saying, Soccer? I know nothing about soccer. I've seen it only on YouTube, some funny clips. That's all. Or how about just, I have no idea about soccer. No idea. For the more practical sense, the Marshall Islands is mostly made up of water. There's very little land mass here and it is difficult to find fields. We're just not exposed to soccer enough. That's a, that, that's a fair point, honestly. Something the article does do though, is talk about an earnest attempt to start a Marshall Islands football federation, or soccer federation in this case, in 1991. And this gives you an idea of how hard it is to put together a team in such a unique place. Cause Australian businessman, Mike Slinger, shows up and sets up a league with about 60 or so amateur players are playing at various venues on the islands, including an old weather station. But as those venues closed or were repurposed, the whole thing just fell apart and they didn't have the funding. He also made sure to point out that belonging to FIFA has a lot of requirements and they realized they just weren't going to reach it. But he echoed some optimism that seems to be carrying over to today. Marshallese people love sports though. If we had an area where they could play soccer, I think people would go for it. So all you needed was a really enterprising, determined person to create an area for them to play soccer. Which brings us to today. Today. This is where we bring in Tom Hamilton, a senior writer for ESPN who did a fabulous job digging up the lore on this story. Because it starts with a local Marshallese businessman named Shim Levi who went through a very familiar experience as a parent. He watched his young son pick up soccer. His son, Carter, would go out with his friends on the beaches and just kick the ball around in each other's backyards. But by the time they got to 10 or 11, they just kind of
kind of stopped playing because there was no funnel. There was no institution. There was no field really or place for them to play a fully organized game. So on his way to pick up his dad of the year award, Shim Levi legitimately started the Marshall Island Soccer Federation so that that would never happen to another kid in the Marshall Islands ever again. I saw there were no facilities, no leagues. And looking at the kids and how much they loved the sport, I knew I had to do something about it. Starting your country's football federation is definitely doing something about it. And it was a slow roll to build it up from nothing. But by the end of 2022, the Soccer Federation was ready to hire its technical director, and they managed to sign on a UEFA licensed coach. The guy used to be Oxford City's U23's manager, and he just became obsessed with the project and repeatedly called it a cool runnins vibe, which that's one of my favorite movies of all time, so we're off and running here. And he settled into being the technical director of a soccer federation for a country that he has never visited. Still, now, He's never been there, but in his defense, it's over 40 hours to get there from the UK, so. His job, to set up the sport at every single level, from training the coaches to acquiring the facilities and acquiring the balls and the kits. It's down to the point that he's looking at the country on Google Maps to see if he can identify spaces where they can put playing surfaces. <laughs> but since he hasn't been there yet, he doesn't know if those, uh, if his scale is right. But I can imagine you'd get there and it's the size of the box room, so it'll be far easier when, when I'm out there, probably. But Google Maps is pretty good. The obvious short-term need, though, for them is a stadium. You can't get registered for the Oceania football federation and you definitely can't get into FIFA without an actual place to play. But that is where the Marshall Islands Soccer Federation is in luck because the Marshall Islands is set to host the Micronesia Games. Think the Olympics, but just for the Pacific Islands. And to host the games, they're building a 2,000 seat stadium, the Majuro Track and Field Stadium, which is perfect and they're planning on using to host the national team in the future after the Micronesia Games. The plans for a league have been laid out, a six-team league that combines the college students in the country with various adults that want to participate and pick up the sport as well. And in order to see who's interested, they're actually sending out invites to all the local villages. And like many island nations, they also have a diaspora to turn to as they build the national team. Because Owers said after he was hired at the end of last year, he was immediately contacted by three players in the United States, which is of course where a large number of Marshallese live. For the explosion of the game in the United States might actually finally help turbocharge the Marshall Islands national team into immediately being competitive in Oceania. And that is the end goal. Recognition by the OFC, Oceania, and by FIFA to be able to participate in World Cup qualifying, which Oceania now in the future gets 1.5 spots in. So it's New Zealand and somebody else. But as you can probably tell, because this has already been going on for three years, they're being methodical and right about it. We want to tick the boxes and make sure our foundations are strong. That was Shim Levi talking to ESPN. Believe it or not, you can't actually put together a national team overnight. Looking at you, Qatar. Look, I'm a historian of the game. I know that Qatar almost qualified for the World Cup in the 80s and the 90s, but it was a funny joke. And that's what I'm here for. Now, if you didn't know, in order to actually get into these federations, it takes a ton of different facilities and accommodations for opposing teams and resources provided and leagues set up. It's a logistical hell. And it is made so much harder for the Marshall Islands because of global warming, which is definitely not what you expected me to say. What in the woke nonsense is this brother talking about right now? <laughs> hey, look, well, according to projections, 40% of the buildings in Majuro are not gonna be usable because of flooding from the ocean by 2030, which if you suck at math, that's seven years from now. And I do suck at math, I'd use a calculator for that. Remove 40% of the buildings from your hometown and things probably aren't looking too spacious and sweet. The new stadium itself actually doubles as a seawall to help keep the sea out for longer. And going back to Carter, Jim Levi's kid, they were playing in backyards where the actual touchline of their games was the tide of the ocean, and their trees in the backyard are already falling into the ocean because of the rising tides. Shoot, there are islands in the Marshall Islands that have had to be completely abandoned because of rising ocean levels. So this is very real for them. And that's where the national team comes front and center, because this whole project is about opportunity, but also visibility. Owers said it's such a tiny nation, but football can help put it on the map. And the visibility of the national team could help secure the long-term future for Marshallese people in their home. The national team is created, it does well, it brings visibility to a country that desperately needs the help 
because about half of its freaking capital city is gonna slip into the ocean in the next seven years, which is why it's important to get their national team up and running as quickly as possible. And it's also why I included the official Marshall Island Soccer Federation donation link at the top of the description. They're still trying to raise money to be able to afford everything they need to set up the league, the national team, and everything they need for the FIFA and OFC certifications. And if you have a couple dollars laying around, it could make a huge difference in a country that's GDP per capita is under $4,000. I mean, look, I say it on stream all the time. Let's go make somebody's day. If you have the opportunity, a few extra bucks to make the Marshall Islands day and help them get a national team for Carter. It's Shem Levi's kid, if you aren't good at recalls. See you all on stream and check out all the great articles that we referenced on this video, including that super awesome article by Tom Hamilton that provides so much more color than I was able to get into in this video. Also subscribe or you will forever be cursed. I'm just kidding. Or am I? There's no way for you to be sure. So just to be safe, you do that. And then you can also just keep binging because that video is about another phenomena in the Pacific, specifically a player who just got to move to Europe after scoring a lot of goals in a few games. And if you learn about him first, you'll be the cool person telling everybody else about that guy. It's pretty neat. Bye now.